In this video, we're going to talk about the consumer's optimization choice. In particular, the problem is as follows. Uh, consumer faces certain parameters in the market, that is budget M and prices um, of the goods they're interested in, and has certain preferences which here are illustrated by a few indifference curves. Okay? The aim is to find the combination of goods, so amounts X1 and X2, that the consumer can afford to buy given the budget and prices, and that maximizes utility. Okay, so let's take the, those two steps separately. First, what does it mean for the consumer to be able to afford a combination of goods? Well, remember we've talked about the budget constraint and how a certain budget and set of prices allow us to draw a budget constraint, right? So this intersection, remember, was M over P2, and this was M over P1, and the slope was the ratio of prices. Okay, so we'll need to be somewhere on or below this budget constraint. We know that any baskets beyond it are not affordable to the consumer. The other aim is to maximize utility. Well, in this graph, the way to find the, um, the maximum utility is to look for the highest indifference curve. Remember, so each of these lines indicates points of equal satisfaction, equal utility, and we also know that utility increases in that direction. So as it is now, we can see that this budget line intersects this indifference curve a couple of times. So we could consider maybe choosing this point. Now, does that seem like a good option? No, because we could move in this direction and get to a higher indifference curve. We can continue to move in this direction. And as long as the indifference curves we're drawing continue to intersect the budget constraint, we'll be able to continue to improve on our utility level. What if we're considering this spot? Well, from here, we can move up. Okay, we can increase how much we have a good two and reduce the amount of good one. Again, we could do that successively until, finally, we arrive at an indifference curve that only makes contact with the budget constraint at one point. Okay, that's the only time when you can't improve utility, you can't get on a higher indifference curve by moving along the budget constraint. And so that is one way of seeing the solution will be at the point where so optimal basket will be where we have a tangency between the indifference curve and the budget constraint. Okay. The other condition, if we were to solve for that point mathematically, would be that we're on the budget constraint. Okay. Now, there are other ways of arriving at this solution. So, for example, recall that MRS is equal to the ratio of marginal utilities. Then if we set that equal to the ratio of prices, we can rewrite this equation as MU1 over P1 equals MU2 over P2. Okay? What does this mean? MU1 is the extra utility from buying one more unit of good one. MU1 over P1 is the extra utility from spending one more dollar on good one. Okay? So if we're at the optimal basket where we can't improve any further, we're finding that the marginal utility per dollar spent on good one has to equal the marginal utility per dollar spent on good two. Intuitively, why is that the case? Well, simply because suppose we had an inequality Well, 
if a dollar spent on good one at the margin brought more utility, more satisfaction than a dollar spent on good two, then we would simply reallocate our consumption. We would move some of our spending on good two into spending on good one. In other words, in this graph, we would move in this direction, okay? And the other way around. However, if these are equal, then there's no direction we can move and improve our uh, utility level. So this is another way of framing the, the condition. We can think of the solution as either emerging from the tangency condition, the condition that there's a single point of contact between the highest indifference curve and the budget constraint, or from this condition that we'll call a rational spending rule. And finally, there's a third way of arriving at the solution. If we remember what the slopes of the budget constraint and the indifference curves mean. This last method consists of running cost-benefit analysis. To remind yourself of where these interpretations come from, you could review the videos on the budget constraint and on utility. In order to determine whether we are at the optimal basket, we just need to compare these slopes. Suppose, for example, that the cost of an extra unit of good one is smaller than the benefit of an extra unit of good one. That would mean that we should go ahead and switch towards buying one more unit of good one. If, on the other hand, the cost of a unit of good one is greater than the benefit of a unit of good one, that must mean, conversely, that the benefit of a unit of good two is greater than the cost of a unit of good two, and so we should switch towards buying more of good two. The only time when we can't improve on utility by shifting in one way or the other is when these are equal to each other. Okay? So this will lead us directly to the tangency condition. So this is a final way of deriving what the uh, optimal basket is for the consumer. Let's continue to think about the consumer's optimal choice problem. We said that, given a budget constraint, if we're somewhere along it where the slope of the indifference curve is flatter than the slope of the budget constraint, that would be this case, that is indicating that at the margin, good one has smaller benefit than cost. Okay. And so the implication would be that we buy less of good one and more of good two. As we keep moving in this direction and encounter different indifference curves, if we keep finding this inequality of the slopes, we'll keep going in the hopes that we will find somewhere a tangency point. But there's no guarantee that we will. It's possible that we get to the intersection with the axis and the indifference curve that goes through there is still flatter than the budget constraint. Okay, So if on the axis where we're not buying any of good one, we nonetheless find that uh, at the margin good one is less uh, valuable than good two, well then that's just the best we can do, right? We don't have a tangency per se, however we also can't improve. So then this would be what we'd call a corner solution because it's at the corner of the budget constraint. And although that equality is not met, we are nonetheless at the optimum point. If on the other hand, something changes, for example, if good one gets cheaper, the budget constraint pivots out, it is possible that now we will find a solution where we purchase both, even a solution where we purchase a lot of good one. Right? So a tangency might be here, for example. Okay, So this would be a case where, in response to good one getting cheaper, we increased consumption quite a bit and about halved consumption of good two.